Hello, it's Melinda from Scrapbooking and Craft. I'm um, just coming on to show you what I put together for Mission Inspiration September. Um, please do excuse my voice, it's still very scratchy and awful. I've been putting off these videos for a couple of weeks hoping my voice and my throat would get better, but it's still all icky and yucky and yeah, well, we will get there. So if my voice is not my happy self, I apologise. I'm happy, but my voice is not. Um, so Mission Inspiration September, if you've never heard of a Mission Inspiration, it's a 10 step journaling page process that Mike Deacon um, puts together. I'll put a link to the Facebook group below. Um, so I'll just run through the steps and show you what I used and what I did. Um, I'm hoping to do some of these in process videos. I just, I did these with my daughter and it's very hard, we do them together and it's very hard to film one or two of us. Um, and usually I don't know what I'm going to do for the steps until I do them, until we rummage through and find what we're going to find, which is very interesting. Um, so here goes. So the first step was to actually, so step number one was to add, cover your page with face fragments. So I was flipping through a magazine and I actually come across this image. This was from a bizarre um, fashion magazine. And I just loved, loved the images. And I thought, wow. That's fragments of faces already. So I only had one. And I'm working, um, before I start that, I should say, working my altered um, book. So my brain won't work today. Altered um, storybook. Um, novel. Altered novel, that's the word I want. Um, so I didn't exactly know how I wanted to use this. So what I want to do is I went to my computer and scanned it and printed out a bunch. And what I actually did was stick six of them in so I sort of covered the background just with the with the um, with the faces close up and I'll do a close up at the end you can see them coming through which is really really cool next one was add a thin layer of, add a thin layer of colored paints so that was step two um, so I wanted a sort of a translucent layer I didn't want to cover everything up so I used a perfect pigment um, these I got a cheap from a shop that was closing down quite a while ago, um, metallic copper. So it's a pure liquid acrylic, so it's actually quite a lot more fluid than normal acrylics. Probably like your high flow acrylics in America. Um, step three was stamp text or patterns over your page. So I decided to do some text, and I actually used this stamp. Um, this is a Couture Creations, an Australian company that makes stamps. And again, this is an old one. Um, so I used the alphabet at the top, and I was so lazy, I'm thinking... I really wanted an alphabet stamp and I couldn't find the one I wanted um, and I found this and it's individual little letters of alphabet and I was being really lazy so I basically left them on. When you pull out clear stamps there's like an acrylic sheet on the front and the back so I just left them on the acrylic sheet and inked them up and stamped them over my page and it worked really well. Um, so I was being super lazy that day but hey it worked I only inked up the letters and then stamped letters all over the page. So that's a hint too if you want if you don't have an alphabet stamp but you have single alphabets um, just ink them up as they sit on your sheet and I was lucky enough these ones were not in order which was really cool um, or you can if they are in order on your page and you don't want them in order just muck, muck them all up but it's got numbers on here too which is rather cute um, so that's what I use so yeah a tip if you don't have an alphabet stamp um, and you have individual letters you can use those and just put a whole bunch on your clear acrylic block or be lazy like me and just don't tear them off the, the acrylic all about lazy and quick things in my journaling. So add journaling quote or phrase. So I put laws of attraction. I sort of went looking for my quote and my focal image at the same time. So I loved all the beads and that all over her face and they sort of stood out to me. So I put laws of attraction as my um, journaling. Make marks with paint or inks or sprays. So I actually took some really cheap, this is from Audi, um, Mars Black acrylic ink which is a thicker ink than the first, um, thicker paint than I used. And then I used this. This is just an off cut from a resource rescue place I got um, quite a few years ago. And I love the image it makes. So I stamped that all over my page. I had a focal image. So this is just out of a magazine. I love this image. That's just, had a lot of doodling. Um, a couple more steps is doodling on Zentangle. So it had a lot of potential in that range. So I used that focal image. And washi tape or strips of pattern paper. So this washi tape fitted in really perfectly with her dress and it fitted in. This is a glitter washi tape. Um, so I stuck some of that on, which was really cool. So that worked really well. Add paint through a stencil. So I didn't really want to add much more to it. I was liking where the page was going. So I used um, a graduated dot stencil 
Um, this is one of my designs, so you can sort of see there's small dots going to big dots and then big dots going to smaller dots again. Um, so it's a really cool stencil to have in your stash. Um, I'll put a link to my store down the bottom as well. So I've just done some white, little white dots and I bought it over the focal image. Uh, something I picked up from Mike Deacon as well, bring it over the focal image so it all ties in together. So it doesn't look like it's just slapped on and floating. Um, so that was step eight. Step nine was Zentangle, Doodle or Scribble. So I got out my Faber-Castell pit brush pens, one in S and B. One is, the B is a brush and the S is like really small. So I just followed, she had a lot of lace patterns on her dress that were really, really light. So I followed that, I did some lines on her neck and then I took the brush one and did sort of a border on the outside. And finished with a white border. Now that one I a bit struggled with because I liked my page how it was. So you probably can't see it. I'll pick my book up and show you a couple of close-ups. Um, I just took a bit of gesso and lightly dusted around the edge, so we'll see how, without getting shadowy light. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see, but you can sort of see some lips under here. This is part of the, this is part of the magazine that I used, so you can see these lips under here. So you still can see it, and you can see that through here, which is what I wanted. Oh, that's getting very dark. I have to work out how to put close-ups at the end of a video, but I'm not quite sure. There at the moment, I don't have, um, what's that? Oh yeah, that's, maybe it wasn't getting shadows. I'll pick it up again for you. I can sort of see the stamped alphabet through here as well. So I really enjoyed this. this is probably one of my favourite pages I've done in a while. Um, so I really enjoyed that one. So thank you, Mike Deacon, for that one. And I will bring you some more missions when we get them done. Alexis has done some too, so she did one of this. I'm not sure whether hers... No, she hasn't filmed hers yet, so I'll get her to do that, and then we'll pop them up. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.